Well, my 12 month contract at Lancaster Armoury has come to an end, and I have to say it was an incredible experience. In January 2023, I left my hometown of Norwich and ventured up north to Nottinghamshire, where I worked with a Mr Matthew Finchon who owns Lancaster Armoury, and is an expert artisan of medieval arms and armour. Throughout the year, I assisted in a multitude of tasks within the company, from networking with customers regarding bespoke orders, attending museums for special handling sessions of real medieval armour, to performing at medieval festivals across England reenacting real battles such as Evesham and Tewkesbury. And, most importantly, I spent the year making armour. Now, it should be said that I have no prior experience making medieval armour, indeed I had no experience with metalwork at all. But I am definitely the kind of person to throw myself in at the deep end and try my hand at something new, so I dived headfirst into the world of medieval armoury. The first item I made was actually a gift for my father. I made an 11th century Norman helmet which I ground and polished to an authentic finish. This was definitely an assisted job as I was still learning the basics, but within two weeks I got to attempt every stage of the construction process for myself. In fact, I even have a video where I showed exactly how I made this helmet step by step, and I've left the link in the description for you. The Norman Helmet project showed me just how many steps go into making an authentic item, not to mention the maths and geometry required to make something that is custom made to measure. I was very proud of how the helmet turned out, and it currently stands proud on my dad's cabinet. My second project was certainly an interesting test. I was tasked with making 10 Anglo-Saxon infantry helmets. These were of a rather simple Spangenhelm construction, made with a central band going from the nose to the nape, which is riveted onto a headband, then two plates are riveted onto the band to close the gaps. The helmets were loosely inspired by the early Anglo-Saxon Shorewell helmet found on the Isle of Wight, however the design was heavily simplified to meet the customer's budget and requirements. To my surprise, these helmets then featured on a History Hit YouTube video all about the Anglo-Saxons in Britain. During this time, I had also been making a few more Norman helmets and a few various designs. This project introduced me to researching artefacts and learning the construction methods before putting hammer to metal. It also taught me some interesting finishing methods such as blackening using bored linseed oil and scale stripping using vinegar wash. By this time I had been an armourer's apprentice for almost two months and it was time for my first trader's market. We attended the alternative reenactors market and I was in awe of the extensive market stalls containing wonderful medieval items such as helmets, longbows, shields, clothing, armour, swords and arrows and so much more. Just like a medieval armourer, we used this market to sell our wares and for customers to pick up their bespoke orders from us. It was also a time to take details down for new custom orders. It was around this time when Matt, the head armourer, took me to the Royal Armouries in Leeds. I had been there a few times before, however with his tutelage I would now study armour at an entire new level. For the first time I had begun to understand how the different pieces were made, how they articulated, and the sheer level of skill and hours spent to produce certain parts of the armour would now perplex and amaze me. Back in the workshop, we had some new projects to complete. Still continuing with helmets, we drew up plans for an Italo Norman faceplate helmet. This was ground smooth and blackened, then we handcrafted decorative brasswork to give it a contrasting ornate finish. The customer was a great fan of this fancy new helmet and wore it at a Rest Park multi period event. In April, we had the pleasure of meeting someone I had been a fan of for a long time, and no doubt some of you will know him too. Kevin Hicks of the History Squad came to Nottingham to talk about the world of medieval armouring with us, and I filmed a video with him for his channel. Again, I have left the link in the description below. In May, we travelled back to Norfolk, not to go home however, but to visit another well-known YouTuber and expert in metalwork, Alex Steele. Here we filmed the first of a two-part series where we made a high-quality 14th century breastplate. Here, both head armourer Matt and Dan, who is the blacksmith for Lancaster Armoury, worked with Alec to forge this beautiful piece of armour. It was now June, and for the last straight month I had been working on a personal project of my own. Inspired by Anglo-Saxon helmets, and having witnessed a beautiful reproduction of the Anglo-Saxon Pioneer helmet, also known as the Wollaston, being made right here in the workshop by our other resident armourer's apprentice, Tom. 
I set to work on building my own representation of an Anglo-Saxon helmet, using inspiration from components from some of the six surviving, or at least partially surviving, Anglo-Saxon helmets found around Britain. Those six partially surviving helmets would be the Wollaston, Coppergate, Benty Grange, Shorewell, Sutton Hoo, and the Staffordshire helmets. Although this is a fantasy helmet, of course, I feel it encapsulates elements of authentic Saxon characteristics, and was also a creative way of putting my newfound skills to test, as this helmet involves steelwork, riveting, multiple methods of brasswork, male riveting, and hinge making. It is certainly far from perfect, but overall I am very happy with how the helmet turned out, and was very proud of what I had learnt so far. At this point, I feel it is important to note that you could spend an entire lifetime at the anvil and still not be able to learn everything there is to know about medieval armouring techniques. Simply put, in the medieval period, one worker would not do all these different jobs from the beginning of a project to the completion. During the Middle Ages, you would have multiple workers who each had a certain skill set and would only work on those elements of the armour before handing it to the next set of craftsmen. I was most certainly not a fast learner, but I had a great tutor who was patient in showing me the techniques and giving me a variety of tasks to help me improve. In June, Alex Steele visited our workshop to film the second and final part of the Breastplate series, where the Breastplate was ground up and giving a stunning blued finish using oil and a low heat. Alec was very happy with the final product, and I have included the links to both videos in the description below. Also, in June, we attended the Barnet Medieval Festival, where armoured knights reenacted the battles of Barnet and St Albans. I also had the pleasure in meeting Graham Turner, esteemed artist who paints remarkable scenes from the War of the Roses, and is an illustrator for Osprey Publishing. Summer was most certainly upon us, and my next project was an assisted job to make a 13th century faceplate helmet with a flat domed skull and more beautiful decorative brasswork. After studying some of the contemporary manuscripts, and many hours in the workshop, we built this very ornate helmet consisting of a rather imposing faceplate visage, which was entirely plated in brass, along with a crenellated brass crown with decorative stamp work. It was now the first weekend of July, and time for the Tewkesbury Medieval Festival. This was the first reenactment event I ever took part in as an armoured fighter, Although I don't have proper armour for it yet, I cobbled some pieces together and took part in the fighting as part of the Beaufort's company, fighting for House Lancaster. Shortly after, I attended the Shrewsbury Medieval Festival in Shropshire, where I was a photographer, and then in August I attended the Evesham Medieval Festival where I met Nicholas from the Linda Beige channel, and filmed some videos with him, two of which may be released on his channel in the near future. I took part in the Battle of Evesham and was lucky enough to get a photographer to get this snap of me, which is still one of my favourite photos to date. Shortly after this, I completed another helmet project where I made a golden Frisian helmet. Again, I recorded my journey making this and the video link is also in the description below. Now, at this point, you probably noticed a trend, I am pretty much only making helmets. Well, I had worked on various other parts of armour during this time, including a leg harness, arm harnesses, elbow armour, as well as practising fluting, but these were to help develop and expand my skill set, so no completed pieces were made yet. Anyways, back to helmets, and the completion of my first piece of my hand cannoneer's armour. I am in the process of making an entire series dedicated to my hand cannoneer's kit, which will be my first proper suit of armour. A few videos are already on my channel. The idea is to build a full harness of munition style 15th century armour that an elite mercenary gunner would have worn, which is represented in the contemporary artwork for this period. This gave me the opportunity to have a go at making one of my favourite pieces of armour, the Salé. Overall I was very pleased with how my gunner's Salé turned out, and today it is my most proud work. Over the summer I had been learning how to do rolled edges, a crucial part of armouring and something that takes patience, skill and a lot of practice. I was assisting on a project for 10 14th century munition style breastplates, adding the rolled edges around the neck and the arms. Personally, I certainly found this task very difficult and despite having many attempts, I was never happy with how the rolled edges turned out. Despite this, with a little cleaning up by the head armourer, the final products were beautiful, and the breastplates were finished in a variety of colours, including blue, polished and blackened. 
In the autumn, I was mainly in charge of drawing and designing new items, such as an English bassinet, another salet with unique decorative rivets, as well as three transitional helmets from the 11th to 13th century. I also completed a second Phrygian helmet and built a pair of brass boulder plates for my hand cannoneers kit, which were made with a petal decoration. While working on my own projects, I also assisted on a variety of jobs such as making the tassets and part of the arms and folds for the Almain rivet harness that Lancaster Armoury built for the Royal Armouries, as well as a few munition arm harnesses ranging from the 14th to the 15th centuries. In October, we travelled up north to Scotland, as we had been granted a private handling session with the Avant Harness, a stunning surviving suit of Italian armour from the 1430s. Only a few days later, we had to travel all the way back down to the south of England, where I attended the Hastings Reenactment Festival. I got kitted up as a Norman knight and fought in a recreation of the Battle of Hastings. During the winter, my final project was, again, a personal project for my gunner's kit. Since this was my last piece of armour I would make as an armourer's apprentice, I wanted to truly put my newfound skills to the test and try something I had never done before. A set of fully articulated arm harness. This project would consist of painstakingly following blueprints and measurements, rolled edges, articulation, a copious amount of grinding, polishing, buckle making, hinge making, leather work and brassing. In the near future I will be making a video as part of my hand cannoneer series where I show the full construction process, but I will say that while I completed the arm harness and it is fully functional, I was not totally happy with how it turned out, it wasn't a high enough quality of what I was used to in the workshop. But that is just how some things go, articulation in steel armour is very tricky to get right and takes an enormous amount of skill and practice. As I had only been an armourer's apprentice for a year at this point, I would still need a lot longer to fully understand how articulation works, but I had a lot of fun working on this project and I am very glad I attempted it. So there we go, this is how I spent 2023 as an armourer's apprentice. I want to give my full appreciation to Matthew from Lancaster Armoury for tutoring me over the last year and shared many skills and experiences with me. He constantly looked over the projects I was doing and corrected any mistakes along the way, somehow knowing exactly how to fix any problem, no doubt a skill that over 10 years of armouring experience provides. And so I am now back in my hometown of Norwich and I am already gearing up for my next adventure. But for now, thanks for watching.